Hey guys, thank you for tuning into my channel again. Um, I know I've been out for a little bit. I actually ended up getting COVID and uh, it knocked me on my butt for a couple weeks. So um, I'm feeling better finally. So we're back at it. On our right here, we have a brand new Atlas 4.0 Joker. Uh, this is a size ML, so Ruroc did change the sizing on this helmet uh, over the previous models. Um, this is a new, brand new uh, flagship model, full face helmet, motorcycle helmet from Ruroc. And um, once again, as you guys know, there's been a lot of controversy around the brand and there's been a lot of people um, hating on the previous helmets. Uh, there's been some issues, so some of the claims are, are justified. I understand that. Um, so I do want to fully disclose that, first of all, I'm not being paid for this review. They simply just provided me this helmet uh, so that I could take a look and give them my thoughts and do this video. So anything that you hear in this video is going to be an honest opinion. Um, if it sucks, I'm going to tell you that it sucks. Without further ado, let's unbox this thing. Let's see what we get in the box. I'm sure it's gonna be very similar to what came in the box with the 3.0, but uh, let's find out. Aesthetically, I mean, from, from a first glance, they look exactly the same. So there's a few changes that we already know of. Um, one of the things is the top vents uh, on the Atlas 3.0. There's three sets of them here. There's a back one, a center one, and a front one. On the 4.0, uh, this is the Joker one, the Batman one, by the way. On the 4.0, there's only one vent at the front, and we do see that they've added a um, opening and closing mechanism for this. It slides left and right to open and close the vent. The middle section and the back section vents have been eliminated completely. On the side, uh, no changes here by the looks of it. Um, still got this little thing here, whatever that is. We have this side vent. Um, I think by the looks of it, it is not a vent. Again, it is decorative. So um, I know that's one of the things that we thought might change, maybe they would turn this into a vent, but they didn't. Um, and I'm sure there's probably good reason for that. I imagine that because this vent is right, you know, your ear would sit right here inside the helmet. So I imagine if they actually turn that into a vent that pulled in air, it would probably make the helmet really loud. Um, on the back, I don't see any changes once again. So I feel like there's a lot more then meets the eye here though. And um, I think that's gonna be inside the helmet, uh, both in the shell, um, the foam, the lining, the uh, padding, and some of the engineering changes that have happened inside the helmet. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at that. One of the biggest changes that we see here is on the foam. So currently you're looking at the Atlas 3.0 lining. And one of the biggest problems with this helmet was that the foam was just too soft and too squishy. So this thing fit okay from day one, but uh, my follow-up on that would be that uh, afterwards I actually had to 
um, contact Rurok and say, hey, look, I need the thicker cheek pads for this helmet because now that they've packed in even just slightly after a few rides, um, the helmet fits way too loose. And uh, one of the things to note here is that this helmet and this helmet are both measured according to Rurok's size chart on their website, and I was not in between sizes or anything like that. It was a pretty clear cut and dry measurement. On the 4.0, we instantly can see that the padding is much, much, much better. And not only that, um, I mean, even just by very gently laying my fingers on this, I can tell that this is firm. It springs up back up really nicely. Um, it's not super, super squishy. This is what I would expect, especially the back ones here. This is exactly what I would expect from a high quality helmet in this price range to begin with. Um, just a side-by-side -side comparison, 3.0, 4.0, 3.0, and 4.0. It is a big, big, big change, you guys. Like this is, there's just a single layer of foam in here. I believe um, Dan from Gears and Gadgets uh, did cut these cheek pads in half and, uh, and he demonstrated that. It's just a one ply foam in here on the 4.0. There is multi-layer foam in here. This is so much more firm. There's so much more material in here, and that is really important. The next thing to note in comparing the two, just so you guys have a closer look, is the vents. Um, one, two, three on the 3.0, and just the one on the uh, 4.0. However, instead of having a vent plug system, we now have a on-off switch for that vent. Um, so there's a little tab there. Pull that left and right. Uh, you can open and close that vent as you please. Um, they've also retained the uh, switch on the inside for the chin vent on this one. So that one opens and closes as well. Uh, once again, we've got a smoke visor included in the box as well as a clear that's mounted on the helmet already. Um, it does say compatible with 3.0 and 4.0. So we know that if you guys own a previous generation of Rurok helmets um, and you've bought any extra visors for your helmet, you're gonna be able to use all of those with this new guy. Mounting system for the visor is also identical with these tabs here. So uh, let's go ahead and mount the smoked visor on this helmet just so you guys can get a real quick look at how easy this is. And it's about as easy as that. So there you go. Now we got the smoke visor on both helmets. For right now, I wanna do a little breakdown of the features and interior of the helmet, the things that have all stayed the same and the things that have changed. So the uh, mechanism here, magnetic, still the same, uh, no difference in that. Um, on the inside liner, we can see that there's a, uh, everything's been kind of re-engineered from the ground up. So if you guys want a really close look at the inside of the helmet, there you go. We've got the Rion uh, liner at the top there. Um, the padding has been completely redesigned. Everything feels really plush, really good. Um, I have no complaints over here. Um, on this helmet, uh, once again, we have the plate here for the shockwave system. Um, I do not have a shockwave system. I actually use a Cardo Packtalk bolt system that'll be mounting in this helmet to do my test ride, but uh, for now, we're not gonna talk much about the Bluetooth. Two of the biggest issues that have been the most talked about um, that have been plaguing Rurok uh, helmets has been uh, problems with fitment, which is directly related to the padding in the helmet, I believe. Um, and the second problem has been the noise. So in this video, I wanna address both of those things. And I wanna address both of those things really clearly. Um, I wanna give you guys some subjective data. I want to show you exactly how these two fit. Um, for me, anyway, uh, given that, you know, both of them are measured off of the size chart on the Rurock website, and both of them should be a correct fit. Um, this one, 
I will say I did get the thicker cheek pads for which solved a lot of my problems. However, for the sake of the video today, I have put the factory cheek pads back into this thing so that we can see exactly how the two fit right out of the box. The second thing that we're gonna address is the noise level and uh, you guys can decide for yourselves whether or not um, the improvements made to this helmet are um, up to your standards um, or if they're not and I'd be really interested to find out because I don't even know yet. So we're gonna try on the 3.0. You guys are gonna see exactly what I mean here, trying on the 3.0 with, as soon as the padding packs in, this helmet, for me anyway, fits too loose. And if I go down to a, this is a large, if I go down to a medium, um, then it's too small and I can't get my head in. So you guys can see how much movement that I have in this helmet. Now this wasn't the case on day one. It's about how far it goes side to side and up and down. So this could definitely be a problem. This is the uh, 4.0, so let's try this one on. And uh, once again, same size uh, or same measurement anyway. And I can instantly tell that this is a very good fit. Um, it's not uncomfortably tight, but it does not rotate on my head. If I force it, that is as much rotation as I can get this way, as much this way. Up and down, same thing. This thing, it's not, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I can take this off, I can pull up on the helmet. It's, uh, it's on there, guys. Um, I can also instantly tell that this seems a lot quieter. So the next thing that I wanna do is uh, make a makeshift wind tunnel for these helmets and uh, take some noise measurements from uh, inside. And hopefully we can get a little bit of noise data on the helmets to see you know, exactly how much quieter or how much better this helmet is at, at isolating noise than this one. And then we can do a first ride review in a later video. So our crafty little setup here involves a uh, decibel meter in a uh, food bowl, a 500 CFM shop vac air blower, and uh, a nice blanket to keep the helmet cozy and uh, you know it at the correct level um, to get the most airflow right onto the front of the helmet. And uh, we've also just uh, replaced the visor on the helmet with a clear one so that when we put this inside there, we can see what the reading's gonna be. There you have it guys. I think that in summary, this is like no brainer, uh, an absolutely huge improvement over the 3.0. This is what the Rurock helmets should have been. And I think that um, with all the pressures that they've been receiving from um, you know, poor reviews, from people having problems, from just getting a bad reputation on YouTube and everything and social media in general, um, I think that they finally decided that, you know what, we need to crack down on this and and really put out a great product and i think that um this is just miles ahead of anything that we've seen from them before is it the quietest atlas ever absolutely um this thing is as quiet as a helmet in its price range should be. Once again, with all the changes that have happened inside this helmet, um, this is gonna be a comfortable helmet to ride in. We will do a first ride with it and, uh, and kind of compare the two um, on the bike in the spring here, but um, for the time being, I do think that I, I can confidently say that this is gonna be a much quieter ride than, than this has been for me. It's, uh, it's really nice to see Rurock incorporating uh, technologies like Rion and stuff in the liner of this helmet, so that's been pretty cool. Um, I think fit and finish wise, this is this is definitely a massive improvement, and um, 
I know that I'm not gonna be the only one to say this. Um, they're really trying to get things right, but I do understand um, people's point of view and the problems and kind of reservations that people have had um, with investing in Ruruk again. I think though that if you're on the fence, um, this helmet finally is a is a product that you can feel really confident about and I'm gonna feel really confident about recommending this to people because I can say that you know when you're paying for this helmet you're gonna get um, a much better value for your money than anything that you've gotten with Ruruk before. This helmet is absolutely something that I would ride with. Um, this is absolutely something that I would recommend. But for now, um, this is it for the video. And soon enough, we'll get to ride with this helmet uh, on the street and see exactly how it performs um, in the real world. Uh, I do know that uh, Dan from Gears and Gadgets has also done a review on this helmet. He was fortunate enough to go to the Vegas event, which I unfortunately couldn't make it to because of the COVID situation. Um, however, I know Dan's been a massive critic of this helmet uh, in the past, or, or rather the, uh, the 3.0 in the past, and um, you guys should go check out his video as well and uh, you know, kind of make a decision from there because it's, uh, it's always good to get more than one opinion before you make a purchase, um, especially something that's gonna cost you as much as this. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, if you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do. And if you have any comments or questions or anything about these helmets or you wanna share your opinion, drop them in the comments below.